Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk about global cultures. Uh, so we're going to look at different aspects of culture and uh, different things that help change and shift culture. So here we go. Alright, so culture is the way of life of a group of people who share similar beliefs and customs. Um, part of this is language. So through language, people are able to communicate information and experiences. Just like right now, I'm using language to communicate information to you. Um, language is also used to pass on cultural values and traditions. And then within cultures, there are language differences. So like if you go down to the south, or if you go to um, California or somewhere else, um, they might speak a different dialect. Okay, so that's a local form of a language. So for example, we have lots of different words for soda. Okay, so in, in this area we say soda. But in my, my cousins, they live in Ohio, and they call it pop. Okay, so th those are different dialects. Um, they also have different pronunciations of, of words. Okay, um, languages are organized into what are called language families. Okay, so language families are large group of languages that have really similar roots. So, for example, Romance languages would be um, like Italian, Spanish, or French would be considered Romance languages because they're all derived from Latin. Now, English and like German, these are called Germanic languages. Okay, so they're derived from the Germanic peoples. Okay, so this right here shows the major languages that are spoken throughout the world. Um, English, obviously, is pretty prevalent, and a lot of that had to do with the British colonizing much of the world. Uh, Spanish, obviously, is pretty prevalent, so we see a lot of Spanish in uh, Latin America here, and then over here in Spain a little bit in, in Africa. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of it is European languages, as you can see, um, but... It's that's a lot has a lot to do with the fact that Europeans went out and conquered a, a lot of different places. Um, but you can see like big Arabic. This is you know where Islam primarily is. Russian obviously is huge. Chinese is huge. So there's quite a bit of, of languages throughout. Uh, religion. So religious beliefs vary significantly around the world. Uh, so there's religious differences that have caused many, many conflicts. So like an ongoing conflict that's going on right now is uh, the Israeli-Palestine um, conflict. So the, the Israel is a Jewish state, um, and they took over that land where Jerusalem is. And they, there were Muslims who were already living there. And so those Muslims didn't really appreciate the Jews coming in. And then uh, even though the Jews had originally owned that land. Anyway, uh, so they're still fighting battles about that. That's going to be an ongoing thing for a while, I have a feeling. Um, but religion does enable people to find a sense of identity. So through religion, this is where we get our moral values. So, for example, with Christianity, they have the Ten Commandments. Okay, um, that that sets rules that you should live by. Uh, you also celebrate holidays and festivals. Okay, so there's all kinds of different holidays, like with Christianity, for example, you have Christmas, you have Easter. Um, with um, uh, Islam, you might have Ramadan, uh, Judaism, Hanukkah. Okay, so there's all kinds of different um, different holidays. And then most religions have symbols and then stories that have shaped cultural expression. So these right here, this is all the different symbols of different world religions. And then, um, so you can see a lot of these symbols, though, or stories um, through painting, through architecture, through music. Uh, you can see this through, like, with Christianity in particular, through Renaissance paintings. Um, when you look at those, like in history class, you, you look at those, and, and a lot of them are very religious, okay? Okay, so this right here is a map of religions around the world. Um, now, Christianity is the biggest religion in the world, um, and so it's split into these three. So it, these three colors are all still Christian. So that's Catholic, Protestant, and then Eastern Orthodox. So you can see... Uh, all through here, okay, North and South America is primarily Christian, okay? 
the areas where Spain controlled, and Portugal too, um, are very Catholic because those countries are very, very Catholic. You can see it's very Catholic still in Europe, uh, but Protestant more in the north, and that has a lot to do with the Protestant Reformation, which we'll talk about when we get to Europe. But you can see Islam has spread a lot, um, and then uh, you can see like different Asian religions that have taken hold. Okay, so uh, a lot of religions, a lot of religious conflict, unfortunately. Um, so in cultures, there's different social groups. So um, social systems develop to help members of a culture to meet basic needs. Uh, so in many cultures, there's social classes. Um, sometimes this is a like a ranking of people based on, it could be like, usually it's based on wealth. Uh, it could be based on your ancestry. It could be based on education. It kind of depends. Um, but like if we look at like the Indian caste system, for example, that would be based on ancestry. But the higher group in the ancestors, you know, with, within your ancestry, uh, also have the higher wealth. Okay, so that usually works out to be that way. Um, ethnic groups are groups that are made up of people who share a common language, a common history, place of origin, or a combination of these things. So uh, like my ethnic group, my family is Irish. Okay, so that would be like my ethnic group because my family came over from Ireland. Um, so there's all kinds of different ethnic groups, especially in uh, Europe. There's a ton put together. Um, there's been a lot of conflict within ethnic groups as well. Uh, as far as government and economy goes, so governments, their job is to maintain order, to protect citizens from outside forces, and then supply other services to its people like like maintain roads and uh, canals and things of that nature. Um, those actual ideas, those three things are actually Adam Smith, uh, incidentally, came up with those ideas. Um, but government is often organized by levels of power. So like we have a federal system, so there's different levels of power. So we have like local power and then we have uh, states or regional power and then we have a national federal government. Um, and then there's also types of, of authority. So where we live in like a democratic system, like North Korea lives in what's called an autocracy. Okay, because they have an autocrat or a dictator that's in charge. An oligarchy is where there's a small group of people that are in charge. So Venice during the, the Renaissance is the best example of that. A group of merchants controlled Venice. Um, economic activities. This is basically your, the economy is basically how does um, society distribute resources to the people. Okay, so how do we meet different human needs like clothing, um, food, shelter, things like that. So we live in a capitalist system, so we are able to earn money and then to purchase things. Um, where there's different systems like communist, where um, the government basically supplies everything for you. Um, but econo e <laughs> economics uh, is where they analyze the ways people produce, obtain, use, and sell goods and services. Uh, so that's a study of economics. Um, agricultural revolution. So uh, we've seen since then uh, this idea of cultural diffusion. And so this is where cultures spread out. Um, through new knowledge, a trade is a huge is a huge thing that's going to happen. Uh, this is early on. This is during the Neolithic era. Um, so this is roughly, I don't know, probably 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Um, so as we get more agriculture, we're going to start to trade uh, food and people are going to start to make goods and so they're they're going to start to trade and then that's when we get cultural diffusion um, early humans were nomadic uh, but as the earth warmed about 10,000 years ago they began to settle in hilly areas and river valleys so the first civilizations happened in uh, it's called Mesopotamia so that's in present-day Iraq so that was the first civilizations that's where um, uh, Sumeria was, or Sumer was, and then Babylon was there, um, and the Akkadians were there, okay, all in that area. Between two rivers, it's the Tigris and the Euphrates that go right through Iraq. 
Um, but so what happened was, is they became farmers, so they learned how to farm. And so they're going to shift from hunting and gathering and being nomadic to producing food and staying in one place and then saving that food throughout the year and then not everybody is starving to death. And so this is known as the agricultural revolution. And so this is what allowed us to create civilizations. So what's going to happen is, is very early centers of civilizations are going to become culture hearths. Okay, so these are where ideas are created and then those spread. So through cultural diffusion, those spread to surrounding areas. And so, for example, Egypt, Iraq, like I just said, that's Mesopotamia, Pakistan, China, Mexico, these are all culture hearths. And so all of these are going to emerge from farming settlements and areas with a mild climate, fertile land, and a major source of water. Okay, so um, in Egypt, Iraq, Pakistan, and China, those the that water source was a river. Okay, in Mexico, it's a lake. Okay. All right, so this right here shows the major culture hearths. Um, so pretty early on. Today, so this right here, um, this right here, I'm sorry, is this is called the Fertile Crescent. Okay, so this is the, um, the area. So it starts at the Persian Gulf and then goes across the Middle East over to the Red Sea here. And so you can see there's Egypt. And this right here is where Mesopotamia was, like was right in here. So this is where the very earliest civilizations started. Okay, now today you could consider the United States a culture hearth. Because we have our own distinct culture and other countries like listen to our music, they wear our clothes, they watch our TV shows and our movies. Okay, so we would be more of a modern day culture hearth. Okay, so surplus food is going to lead eventually to the rise of cities. So more and more people are going to gather and they are going to create cities. So there's not going to be as much need for farmers because more and more they're going to uh, change technologies and that's going to help farming to become easier so people don't have to just farm okay so there's other ways that people can make a living so these people who are going to start to create new things these people are going to be called artisans and whenever there's artisans so people who make something there's going to be merchants and those are people who sell something okay so the artisans make the merchants sell and so they need a government that organizes this newly complex social system. So somebody's got to be in charge. The more people there are, the more complex the economy is getting, the more there's a need for somebody to govern that. And so um, we're going to see cultural contact is going to promote cultural change. So we're going to see this, like I said before, through trade, through travel, like sometimes people just want to travel and they experience other cultures or even through conquest. So when we looked at that religion map and we saw that Latin America was really Catholic, that's because of conquest of the Spanish and the Portuguese. They were very, very Catholic and they made all their colonies Catholic. Okay, so that's why it's, it's so prevalent throughout Latin America. Um, some mass migrations are going to be forced, so like African slaves, um, when they came across into the Americas, they were bringing their culture with them, and I think we can all argue that, it, that they have had a very big impact on our culture. Um, and then others, other cultures were to escape persecution, famine, or to find political freedom. So like I said, my, my family was Irish, so when my, my family came over in the late 1840s, and um, they were escaping the potato famine that was going on. And so a lot of that immigration that happened to the United States between the 1840s and like basically World War I, a lot of that was Europeans, in particular Eastern Europeans, who were coming over to escape um, persecution or famine, like I said, or just looking for new opportunities uh, in the United States. So these migrants, when they come over, they carry their culture with them. So I keep using my family as an example, but my family, like I said, Irish. So St. Patrick's Day, kind of a big deal in my family. And we get together, we make um, uh, corned beef and uh, cabbage. And we, my uh, grandma, she used to make, she doesn't anymore, but she used to make Irish stew. And we'd have a big party and everything and get together. Um... But 
we have my family obviously we still keep that but we've also blended or assimilated into the existing culture so we're not just fully irish anymore we are we are americans now okay all right um so industrial and information revolution so two major revolutions are going to happen and they are going to really impact culture um, so the Industrial Revolution in the 18th and 19th century is, is going to start in Great Britain. And basically it's going to start with the textile industries. And um, basically what's going to happen is it's going to lead to a rise of factories and goods are going to be produced very quickly and easily. And so there's going to be a major change in the economy because people aren't just farming anymore. They're not just making goods out of their homes anymore. We're getting these cheaper better quality goods that are just getting pumped out of these factories and these workers have the money because they're working in the factories to buy those things. So we're becoming much more consumer oriented and less just kind of like survival oriented, I guess. Um, but this is going to lead to social changes as people are going to leave farms for jobs in the cities. It's going to lead to the rise of unions. It's going to lead to like child labor laws. It's going to lead to um, working like before the industrial revolution, having a clock was not a huge deal. But once you got a job at a factory, like you had to be there at, let's say, 8 a.m. If you're late, then you don't get paid, okay? Or they don't let you work or whatever. They fire you, you know? Um, so you have to be on time. So clocks now is a big effect of the industrial revolution. Clocks are very important to us now. Okay, because we have to know what time things are happening. We have to be certain places at certain times. Another big change is going to be the information revolution. So this is a very recent revolution. So we're talking like, like in the 90s, okay, when computers really started to take off. Now, computers were invented like in the 1940s, okay, but um, when they became more readily available to individual people. Um, so computers can store huge amounts of information your your phone has more capacity to hold information than the the early computers in the 50s that that took up entire rooms did and we have inf we have access to information just at the tip of our fingers now it's incredibly insane the fact that we can i can just pick up my phone and i can call tokyo and i can can talk to somebody in Japan at the blink of an eye is absolutely insane. So this, uh, through social media, through, through like being able to call people, all this stuff has really dramatically changed our culture. And you can see this, um, just in class every day when you walk in, you know, people have a certain way that they speak and they, you know, things that they picked up on the internet. Everybody's always like looking at memes on their phone and then they see a funny one. They got to show their friend like that's exchanging culture. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. That's all I got for today. Um, don't forget to finish your processor. So it's the acrostic. Make sure you write in complete sentences. Okay. It has to have information from the notes. Have a good day.